Hey folks, looks like I've got time to get one more video squeezed in. Another installment of the Red Book of Magic. This time we're doing eye spells, or actually continuing eye spells. No, are we starting? We are starting eye spells. <laughs> one of two episodes, two, two, two sessions. We get done two, two little videos. Stay down. Okay. Identify scent. Old spell. Identifies the nature of any scent encountered while under the spell's influence. In other words, during the duration, right? Um... If it's something that you've never, the target has never encountered before, you suppose it's something he's never encountered before. But, you know, he can rem remember it, right? So next to me, he goes, hey, that was a thing I smelled before. Yeah, I think so. Um, also, while under the influence, in other words, during the duration, the target's sense of smell is increased dramatically. They gain the scent skill. 25% plus perception modifier. Can be improved with experience okay illusory motion illusory odor 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 sight sound substance taste all of these illusion spells <clears throat> now i have to admit up front i have not messed with these kinds of spells at all in my game either as a player or as a gm <clears throat> excuse me there's a call out box on illusions right so these magically created effects are, in fact, real, right? You cannot disbelieve these things. An illusion with a substance can do damage and can, in fact, be damaged. Uh, these spells, there's six of them got combined in any matter. Based upon the get guidance of the Game Master. Um, it does specify that if an illusion is cast on an already moving object, like a wagon or a chariot, right? The illusion moves with the object. And they get a little, they get a little box, a little list of standards for intensity, right? So an intensity one, odor is like a rose, tastes like water, sound like a whisper. Intensity two, odor like smoke, tastes like a pear, sound like a conversation. Intensity three, odor like scented oil. So we're getting pretty heavy now. Tastes like a lemon, sound like a shout. So we've got some pretty hefty size here, right? Intensity four, sm the odor of burning pitch, the taste of vinegar. And the sound of an avalanche. So there's a cascading increase. Maybe that's why they're trying to put limits of four on some of these spells. Okay. Not illusion spells, other ones, right? Okay, so motion animates and mo allows movement of the illusion for each additional point, allows up to three meters per melee round, a movement of one. Also gives the caster uh, the ability to manipulate. The illusion with his de at his deck sign three. Odor, a single scent. Right. Uh, it says here that four points or more forces anyone encountering the odor to make a Constitution times two roll, or or be overcome by nausea. That sounds like the chaos spot from Dark Room Gate. Mm, interesting. Okay, illusionary sight is visualization. So you see something, right? Three size per rune point. Uh, I'll give an example here. If you made um, an illusion of armor, uh, it'll only cover your legs kind of thing for an adult. Because that three size points worth, right? Sound. You must specify the nature, duration, and intent. The GM is supposed to use the intent of the sound um, rather than looking for a specific noise, right? Single sound. If you want to do a different sound, you got to cast it again and change it. Okay. Substance creates one size worth of matter. Temporarily physical reality. It could be a rock. It could be a fire. It could be a pile of gold. Uh, one size point equals one hit point. Okay. If you combine that with illusory motion. Okay. So... In order to do damage with an illusion, it, it has to hit you, right? So, it could be an illusory sword that I'm swinging around. Or it could be an actual illusion trying to punch you, in which case you need to be using motion, right? The motion to do the to hit thing, and then the, the substance to give size to do damage. Yeah. Okay. 
taste, again, a single taste, one size worth of material, right? So you can make dain tasty, da tasty dishes, dainty, where dainty come from? You can make tasty dishes or something so foul, perceived as being poisonous. Each point of the spell, so we're stacking, right? Each room point creates 1d6 of potency for your taste. Okay. Impede Chaos. Old spell. Um, the target becomes difficult for chaos creatures to hit. For each point stacked, subtract 20% from the attack skill of the chaos creature. Why are we not limiting that to 4? That's a minus 100. Just a thought. Okay. Incarnate Ancestor. Old spell. Occupy the body of one of its descendants. The host spirit is temporarily suspended in the spirit world and will return when the spell duration ends, right? Except if the caster fumbled while casting the spell or if the spell is extended for longer than one day. In both of those cases, you know, either one, the ancestor permanently possesses the body. And the host spirit goes to the land of the dead. Now I can see this fumble thing. It just happens, right? Never, you know, bad things happen, right? But why would you intentionally extend it longer than a day? Which causes you to die. And for the ancestor, oh, maybe some kind of sacrifice. I'm sacrificing myself for this ancient, ancient ancestor spirit who's so much more powerful than all the rest of us. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. Doesn't taste right. Okay. You can cast it without specifying a specific ancestor, in which case you get a random one. And that can be dangerous because a third of the random ones are, let's say malicious, but malicious isn't the right word. Where did it go? Yeah, just a second ago. Sorry, guys. Summon, 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 summon. There's malign. There we go. Three of them are malign. They attack you immediately. And so that's why doing this Axis Monday thing can be helpful if you're doing a random ancestor because that gives you a D6 worth of rounds to figure out if this guy's going to attack you or not. Or maybe, maybe induce spirit combat and take it over or something. I don't know. But again, that's why you know it's dangerous to do random ones unless you have an Axis Monday spell up, right? Okay. Increased temperature. No. Uh, the temperature for 10 meters around the caster increases by 1d6 degrees Celsius. Each additional or stacked point um, either intensifies the warmth by 1d6 or doubles the radius of effect. Handy. Increase, decrease wind. Old spell. Um, the average wind strength well, increases or decreases the average wind strength by 1d6. For 100 meters around the caster, each additional point, in other words, stacked, adjusts the strength of the wind by another d6, or increases the radius by 100 meters. That's pretty standard kind of stuff. If you look at page 159 in the blue book, it gives you penalties for movement, missile fire, and visibility due to wind speed. Uh, okay, this spell has no effect on temperature or wind direction. Wind direction got it. Temperature. It's 30 degrees out, and you got 50 mile an hour wind. I think wind chill applies, but that's just me. But I can tell you from experience that even a 60 mile an hour wind chill at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 110, 110 degrees Fahrenheit still feels like 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Induce this dough. Ooze dough? Yeah, ooze dough. Spell is used on female trolls wishing to give birth to a great troll. So, on purpose. Do great trolls come by accident? I don't know. Maybe the troll book will tell us. Okay, it summons one of Karg's followers, a darkness spirit with a power of 12 d6. <laughs> Ouch! <clears throat> The troll steps forward and the spirit envelopes her in its form, automatically inflicting the fear shock attack. 
equivalent to that made by a darkness elemental. If she survives, she suffers no more ill effects and emerges with the merges with the darkness spirit. Several hours later, she emerges from the spirit, right? Yeah. Emerges from the spirit. Spirit returns to the underworld, and she is now pregnant, and in one year will give birth to an infant great troll. But this actually pinged me up. we got an asterisk here. <clears throat> About an issue I've been trying to deal with in Glorantha, and that is uh, pregnancy. How long does it take for gestation to occur? I mean, we talk about on Earth about being nine months, but it's actually ten. <laughs> um, because you don't count that first month where you miss your, miss your period, I guess. Um, but tracking that out in days and stuff, and looking at this new calendar with the seasons and stuff like that, and I actually came up with one year. You give birth one year after you become pregnant. And here it says, a, the troll is now pregnant and one year later gives birth. Hmm, maybe I was right. Although I did try to figure out you know, how big are, how big are trolls compared to people. Because the larger a creature is, the longer the gestation is. But it got, it got too annoyed, even for me. Okay, insect song, new spell. Target grows two small stubby wings, um, which create a loud creaking noise that is near deafening at close range and clearly audible for up to five kilometers. It can be used to transmit messages. Morse code. Creak, 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 creak. Uh, so these messages are only understood by. Gorakiki, did I say that right? Gorakiki locust initiates within earshot. Okay. Inspiration, new spell. As 20% to one of the following skills that are chosen at the time of casting celestial lore, cult lore of the caster's cult, dance, play instrument, or sing. Each point that is stacked up to, again, our mystical four either boosts an additional skill or increase the boosting by 20%. Now it says or in the write-up, but in the example it says if the spell is stacked with three additional room points, so that's four total, right? 20, 40, 60, 80, Right? The caster could add plus 60 to two skills. I'm seeing plus 40. Am I missing something? Let me know. Inspire Love, new spell, adds 20% to any one of the target's love passions chosen by the caster. That you know, kind of implies that the caster needs to know what passions the target has, right? Um, or it will temporarily create a new love passion at 20%. Why 20%, not 60? Everything else that deals with passions and stuff starts at 60. The target can resist normally. Each additional point stacked before adds an additional 20% to the aroused passion. If you gain a new passion, you can make experience checks for that. Yeah, the which will almost certainly succeed because they start as a 20. If you make that roll, you're going to succeed at an increase. Although you're not going to succeed on casting. Oh. I'm not sure. Okay, Invigorate, Old Spell. Completely revitalizes and refreshes the target, even if they are exhausted. What? Where's the definition of exhausted? We don't track um, fatigue anymore. Is there something in the blue book about exhaustion? There might be exhaustion levels dealing with the environment. I'll need to look and check on that. I didn't think about that before, but that threw me off. Exhaustion. 
We don't try fatigue. How do we know if we're exhausted? Okay. Da, 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 da. Restores any constitution that's been temporarily lost through some condition, such as hunger, thirst, or exhaustion. We have no rules on losing constitution due to hunger, thirst, or exhaustion. I'm hoping it. it's in the GM book. Okay. Inviolable. Old spell. Ernalda or her associated cults. <clears throat> Those members within three meters of the caster, right? And that's who it affects. It keeps everyone from getting excited or violent. It counteracts emotion affecting spells like demoralize or fanaticism or fear that are weaker than the inviolable spell. So you can boost it with magic points to overcome those powerful emotion affecting spells such as arouse, passion, berserk, and madness. Or, it says and, to blast through counter magic and other defensive spells. Okay, so we don't need to stack, but we can boost to affect spells that are stronger than a one point rune spell. Okay. <clears throat> Remember how I've talked before about how we've said power versus power in like eight different ways? Here's a whole paragraph. Work, the caster must roll 1d100 and compare the results on the resistance table to their own power, as if the caster has the active characteristic. Following the results until a value lower than the roll is reached. Following the results until lower value until a value lower than the roll is reached. Period. All targets whose power would now be overcome are affected. Invisibility. Old spell. You become invisible by diverting the attention from the target to some other spot. Right? The subject of the spell remains unnoticed unless they wish to draw attention to themselves or are detected by magic. If the subject makes a noise and then can try to strike it, them by sound alone, that's at minus 75, I said five, minus 50, if you can't see them. Darkness is minus 75. Invisibility is only minus 50? Hey, question mark, minus 75 there, see what's going on. Okay, if the adventurer protected by the spell attacks with a missile or melee weapon or with magic, they become visible in that strike rank, and they stay visible until strike rank 12, and they disappear. Or as they say here, disappear again after the last strike rank of that round, which is 12, right? Okay. Unless they're engaged in melee. So if they're engaged in melee, they don't disappear again. If the, if the adventurer, the invisible adventurer, right, disengages from melee, they disappear again at the end of that round. Interesting. And that's the end of the ice spells. Happy gaming.